street racing. What do you imagine when you hear those two words? <laughs> the urban sprawls of America. Cheap muscle cars, retro JDMs and European Econa boxes lining up. Engines revving, cars in all kinds of body modifications and colorful vinyls. Techno, rock or hip-hop blasting out of massive sound systems in the trunks. A girl in a skimpy outfit walks out, raises her arms and... This is what I would call the most traditional assumption of what street racing is. What I grew up with watching Fast and Furious and playing Need for Speed. But what if I told you it's one side of a multifaceted die that is called street racing? Let me take you on a trip to the land of JDMs and mountainous togas, the land of legendary tuners and long highways, the birthplace of the Midnight Club and many more. Welcome to Japan. It's a long night on Tokyo's famous Shuto Expressway or Shutoko Sokudoro, shortened to Shutoku and in particular the Beisho route, otherwise known as the Wangan. Two cars seem to be riding alongside, before one of them rapidly takes off, the second follows suit. It's a battle, a game of cat and mouse, those cars are obviously modified, engines are tuned to force out incredible top speeds, carefully weaving through traffic and keeping distance. This is what we don't usually see. But there is a game series that lets us peek into the world of highway racing, and this game series is Shutoku Battle, or Tokyo Extreme Racer if your name is Crave Entertainment. So let me take you on a ride through the legacy of the Shutoku. Usually, I like to start with talking about the game's story, but just like in Split Second, the game's story is non-existent. And what's worse is that it's actually cut from the Western version. There are still the three endings, which I'll talk about later, but no chapters, no setup. So to fix this problem, I will read the translated text of the story from the Tokyo Extreme Racer Phantom Wiki and try to add decent visuals to keep it interesting. So let's boot up the game's quest mode and see where we end up. All legends are meant to be replaced. One machine, even the fastest one, pulled over while it was being called. That ridiculed the defeated car as it was trying to follow its taillight while it disappeared into the darkness of the night. Then, the fast one was revealed to be Jintei, the Speed King, a name which was engraved all over the Shutoku. And to make a name for a new legend, fame-hungry people visit the Shutoku to wander around and pursue their prey, those who sharpen their skills with the lone wolf. Above all the people who nearly matched Speed King's skills were 13 drivers, known to be hostile and feared. They are called the 13 Devils. Repeated battlers, many of those who have defeated local rivals will get the chance to challenge them. But this chance is for everyone. This is the Shuto Expressway, the last paradise on earth where a legend is born. To start our quest, we need to get ourselves a car. Now there is a wide selection, even for a starter. There are multiple popular sports cars like the Skylines, the Mark III and Mark IV Supras, FD and FC RX-7s, but also down the middle cheaper options like Integra or Civic. And last but not least, weaker Econoboxes, the Toyota A86 family, AE111s, Chasers, and of course a singular K car in the form of the Honda I mean, just Honda Beat. I go with an interesting choice, being the Toyota AE86 Levin Coupe. Another initial defect with his overused AE86. I hear you say, and I agree with that statement. But remember, this is not the Trueno hatchback. It's the Levin Coupe, which is, in my honest opinion, the only tolerable rendition of the AE86. Oh, for f**k's sake! Also, we're not in a mountainous toge, we're in a long straight expressway. A86 is one of the weaker starter cars, and I thought it would be le funny to drive this underpowered Econa box on the expressway and see it punch above its weight.
A huge merry-go-round watches the shutoku. However, the noises you hear in that playground are of exhausts and tires screeching. Instead of white horses and carriages, you can feel the power tune machines. A carousel that everyone is invited to in this fantasy. Shuto Expressway Line, commonly known as C1, is where all legends start off. Welcome to the C1 loop, a legendary section of the Shitoku, populated by the weakest teams and the least powerful cars, and is currently our entire play area, as we start as Old Stonehead, which is your starter nickname that changes based on your car, driving style and progress in the game. We start by making our name on the highway. The first team you'll probably encounter is Rolling Guy, a group of people driving AE86s and all named Rolling Guy with the number. The leader being Rolling Guy 1. They're not the only ones standing in our way. On the inner side of the C1 loop, there's also Little Gang, a group of racing amateurs with skill sets and tunes ranging from atrocious to decent. And at last, Knife and Forks, a group of racers working in the food industry. Bakers, waiters, you name it. All their names having some sort of connection to food or restaurants. For example, Four Star Driver and Street Wine. With the first teams conquered, we attract some unwanted attention. Traitor Jackknife, also known as Kiriji Sakamoto. There are rumors that he tends to play with his prey, constantly pressuring them by trying to force an overtake. Luckily, his weakness is blocking. And whilst rumor has it that he's excellent at maneuvering in sharp corners, in practice, corners are a perfect opportunity to gain a lead. With the first of the mythical 13 devils down, we're back to claiming the C1 for ourselves, now as Relentless Cat. Sweeping up the inner side of the loop, we move to the outer side, populated by the likes of Curving Edge, a team driving exclusively Hondas. Also, they tend to spend way too much money on mods for their cars. Defeating the outer loop teams only provokes faster racers to challenge us. True Slide, real name Hiroyuki Itsuki. He'll be your first field to race. His tunes are imperfect, but his brakes are top notch. Unfortunately, he takes corners full speed. Even blind ones, which often leads to him crashing into something and giving us a chance. But he's merely the appetizer. Real name Setsuko Kuroe. A pathetic by nature, grabbed a middle class car and turned it into a rocket ship. At this point, my AE86 was outright unable to compete. But I had so much money, I could get a speedier vehicle. The front wheel drive Mitsubishi FTO, which is rare because I tend to steer towards rear wheel or all wheel drives, which is paradoxical because IRL, my Toyota is a front wheel drive. But man, it's so easy to throw around the FTO in the corners. The A86 had to be forced into a corner, but the FTO slides through them without breaking a sweat. And after beating Kuroe, we beat the first major barrier to entry of the game. Rainbow Bridge, this intense velocity from speed demons, sometimes kindly, sometimes aggressively, looking down on the guardians of the runners. For the runners who are receiving the guardian angel's love above, she caresses their arms a little on the ring road. There is no such thing as destroying the runners, who have learned a little on the C1 loop. But the whimsical goddess of the Shitoku will easily change her mind if something faster than them appears. Daiba and Fukagawa routes, Shinkanjiu. Is this where she smiles at them? Now, as early monkey, we unlock a new piece of the expressway for us to drive, the Shinkanjiu, which is separated into a clockwise and counterclockwise routes. On the clockwise route, we find teams like R Gangs, which is one of the two teams where all racers are all women. Driving heavily tuned Toyota A86s, the other all female team is Cupid Arrows who all drive Hondas. Least of all, there's Dry Cruise, but there's nothing special about them. Defeating all three calls for a new challenger. Yeah. 
Toshiki Takahashi, an ex-mercenary who served in multiple hotspots around the globe. This experience made him outright fearless. He's reckless, and his car is tuned to perform. But his recklessness is the end of him, as it takes one mistake for us to quickly make a large enough gap and win. Time to turn the clock the other way and enter the counterclockwise route. Diamond Image is this route's bland team. Nothing special about them except their rainbow logo. Rhythm Box, a team of all kinds of music enthusiasts, their cars are minivans and wagons. Because they tend to shove the beefiest sound systems, most of their names are references to music. For example, Jazz Green and Hip Hop Red. Wind Stars, a team of people who lost all hope in life. Loners, people with failed careers, even their leader lost his friend in a car accident and is described as borderline suicidal. Quote, he thinks he has nothing to lose. Unquote. Their logo somewhat reflects that, featuring what appears to be two pentagrams and a set of white wings. With Shinkanja conquered, the devils come to play. Fujishita Hirotada managed to make his car reach a ridiculous top speed once. His car is powerful and lightweight, a dangerous combo for both us and him, since it made his Nissan Cedric unstable. He's also just a pawn for a greater enemy. Shiro Sasaki is a monster. He cares only for overtaking and staying in front. He has a tendency of lying in ambush behind trucks. Judging from the car's form factor and delivery, he might be an ex-professional racer. His car is modeled after a Mercedes CLK DTM car. I dare to assume that he might have participated in the German Touring Championship or DTM for short. Luckily, his ambush tactic bites him in the ass as he gets stuck in traffic and we get a massive enough gap. The stage's asphalt emerges along the road. An instant sonic drama is performed every night, extracting the lines from the sounds of mufflers at Kanjio and Shinkanjio, where everyone dreams of becoming the leader of the roads. Actors who don't know defeat on one stage prepare for battle, for only one protagonist is ahead. Now, a new story is about to be told. We now have an entire new set of rival teams to beat in the C1 loop and the Shinkanjio. On the C1 inner, we find Rat. Rat, a team of K car drivers. In the game, this kind of car is represented by the legendary ABC of Autozam or Mazda AZ1, Honda Beat, and Suzuki Cappuccino. Queen's Paradise, which is full of quirky guys driving Hondas. Like, one of the team members is depressed because his favorite car horn stopped working. Another one has an obsession with steering wheels and installs a new one every time he races. An interesting bunch. On the outer route, we find Max Racing, all drive four-door luxury sedans. The defeat of these three teams attracts a dark predator. Otsuku Hifu. The word dark in his name perfectly describes this car, being a fully black Honda S2000 but also his reputation. You see, no one who ever raced him comes back to the expressway. Why, you ask? It's because he tends to win so badly that his opponents are forever mentally scarred. Call it a miracle, skill or pure luck, but we avoid this tragic fate. We return to the C1 loop to finish off the last local team, Elegant Wild. They don't stand out so much. Advancing to Shinkanji clockwise, there we find Tokyo Jungle, spelled with an I. Their shtick is their handling techniques, being avoiding drifting at all costs and sticking to grip. But that's not all. Almost everyone on the team is a professional drifter. Some came straight from the toga scene, others are veterans of their craft. The other team we encounter is Team Alpha, a group of US military personnel working at a US military base in Japan. One of them is a producer at a game company, another is a bartender at the base, two others are in the Air Force and the top two of the team are naval officers. And with these major players out of commission, we have another force to worry about. Daigo Kaneyama. 
He went for a different racing philosophy. Instead of making his car faster or lighter or better to handle, he decided to sharpen his mind. So he traveled to India and practiced asketism. He even burns incense for concentration. Has amazing willpower, will keep pushing no matter what, but when he's ramming into my rear bumper, this becomes a Sisyphean task. But he's not alone. Not a lot is known about Atsuyaka Takenaka, only that he uses even the smallest opportunities to win. He's always on guard, so overtaking is a challenge, but no challenge is hard enough for us. Kanjo, Shin Kanjo, one step closer to legend. Now at the top, the remaining 13 devils bet on their pride. The last wall blocking the path to the legendary status is high and steep. Welcome to the Wangan Yokohane route, the god's realm of extreme speeds. Only those who survived the demanding battle of spiritual fortitude can open the door to legend. Before Speedy Tiger moves to the big boy playground that is the Yokohane and Wangan routes, we need to finish business with the Shinkanjo counterclockwise teams, being Explosion, who are not so special, and Harmonize, who seem to focus on the aesthetic mods to their cars. But they can back this up with good driving skills. They're the last of the Chapter 3 teams, so we move to Wangan South where we are reminded that FTO's cornering doesn't equate to good straight line speed. Which means I need a faster car, and whilst I'd love to buy my favorite Nissan Skyline R32, which has proven to be a beast when tuned properly, I also noticed that I have a bit of an excessive bias towards the Nissan. So I made an executive decision to instead buy a Honda NSX. And instead of my favorite colors like white, grey, black or red, I picked green, which looks good. While the car lacks a turbocharger, the naturally aspirated engine seems to be still powerful enough to compete on the one gun, in particular against Rotary Revolution. And as you can see by their logo and name, they have a fond love for the Rotary engine, present on the Mazda 787B, Le Mans car, Mazda RX-7 and RX-8. Since this game features only the two Mazda RX-7 models, the team drives exclusively those. The team consists of decent drivers with more or less successful backgrounds. The team's top two are brothers, with the leader being an heir to a presumably aristocratic family. Thunder Dragoon, a menace on one gun south route. All of the team's drivers are of Chinese descent, all are named after a color, with the word dragon next to it, and they all drive Dodge Vipers, which is their biggest strength. Since on the massive straight that is the one gun, Wipers' massive engine simply outspeeds anything you throw at it. But their biggest weakness is also them driving Dodge Vipers, because this car handles like a soapy brick. One wrong move and they are thrown into the guardrails for us to overtake. We move to the north route, we find two teams. True Ride, a team founded by a veteran of the street racing scene, who, after retiring, comes back hungry for more, and Unlimited, which seems to be a group of experienced drivers who either moved on from a different team, like the leader being an ex-member of Rhythm Box, or drivers who are past their prime but refuse to give up. With one gun under our control, a devil comes out for a challenge. Kenji Naito, a popular persona, has a cheerful character and a lively driving style. Quite cautious when it comes to racing, but this caution is not to be underestimated. His RX-7 has a mighty engine, and he tends to be a good analyst. Too bad he wasn't able to predict that I would lure him into one of the technical sections of the Shinkanjiro, where his engine becomes a massive detriment. There's still another massive section that we need to cover. Yokohane. We again start from south, encountering Double Mind, a team of genuine psychopaths who have been programmed in a game to ram you off the road. Too bad they're so focused on trying to kill you that they themselves crash into something. Next up, Commander. Their specialty is driving all-wheel drive sedans. Meaning, expect a lot of Subaru Imprezas and Mitsubishi Lancer Evolutions. Yokohane North. Meet APS. They're based on a real-life adventure planning service, which, among other things, 
work on the biographies for Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero. That's why in the Japanese version, all the APS drivers are named after real-life employees of APS. And it just so happens that defeating them caused another overconfident fool to arrive. Akika Ogata might not be the best at racing, but his car is tuned with enough power to cover this flaw. Tends to let his rival through before slamming the gas and quickly overtaking. Too bad, I'm more than just some rival. They're surely more interesting than Fanatic Future. Despite their cool name, they're just a bunch of good drivers. Back to Shinkanji we go. On the counterclockwise route, we quickly find Gesellschaft. Ew. Krauts. Only thing that makes their team somewhat stand out is their stupid name and the team leader's car having golden rims. Tfu. There's also Highway Outlaw, a team of great drivers either with good mental training or just fast, modified cars. I guess we're final racing competent drivers. Still, we seem to just be faster. In the clockwise route we find Top Level, a team driving exclusively Mitsubishi Lancer Evos, as well as ERO, or Elysium Road Organization, which consists of all kinds of successful racers. Wanderers who race for different teams, lottery winners, managers, bank walkers, etc. And there's someone too caught up with their name to realize that I'm the one hunting now. Yohei Kimijima, a veteran, used to be a record holder for the fastest lap on the C1. Now, trying to beat back his record holding positions, he drives like a madman. His NSX is powerful, and he even created a technique that helps him not lose out on corners. Too bad fancy techniques can't compensate for driver error, and I'm not exactly fancy on allowing errors. Shinkanji done and dusted, we are back to our roots, the C1 loop. On the inner route menu we have SS Limited, a la why the f*** are you driving for or sedans against a guy in a sports car, if you pardon my French. Next team on the list is Fine Drive, street racer with ambitions to go professional, exclusively driving in San Silvius. At least they can try and offer a challenge. On the outer route, Departures, driving Subarus with their team member who is an ex-cop and Twister, who drive RX-7s. <sighs> I'm getting bored here, you know. Ah, finally, some entertainment. Seita Wazumi was kind enough to paint their Mitsubishi 2000 GT a bright blue color that makes sure that anyone who's not sleepy like me gets blinded. As for me, oh, and they're gone. Huh, something's not right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Matoya Iwasaki, the speed king in the flesh, said to have appeared out of nowhere and quickly defeated every leader he encountered. I guess we're not so different. This car is the stuff of a legend. Don't even try to compete at a straight line. He's unstoppable. But his car is still heavier than my NSX. We can press the advantage at corners. And he picked the worst spot. The C1 is a technical loop. Too many corners to top out, but enough for a nimble NSX to clutch out a victory. A legend has come to an end, who once was a challenger is now a target. A new legend has arisen and competitors will emerge. The appearance of the Speed King has made the 12 Zodiacs return to the battlefield. There is no rest in your quest. Not yet.
Now that we hold the crown of the Showa Expressway, new challenges appear. This time we are the ones testing them, not the ones tested. I'll also be brief because we have two new teams on every part of the expressway and the entire 12 zodiacs spread out for us to take on. On the C1 loop, cats only drive Japanese sedans. Road of Justice are just good drivers. Black Knights only drive Subaru wagons. And Rings are just good drivers in sports cars. Kiyomi Kawagoe is a kind and caring driver, who not only cares for her car, but for fellow drivers. As beautiful as her Mitsubishi 3000 GT. Shinsuke Kitami, on the other hand, is a speed demon. His car is pure power and he will fight tooth and nail for a crown. Shinkanjiya Freeway All drive Nissan GTRs TR Racing Veterans of their craft The leader is a nihilist. Another star All drive the Subaru Impreza GC8 model Super Speed Wagon All drive wagons as their name implies. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Yasuhisa Edashima, fast on straight, careful on turns, has to strain his mental fortitude so hard that he can only race once a day. Yuta Morikuchi pushes the burden of strain onto us, tries to pressure us but his tricks tend to backfire, is the guitarist in a rock band, everything is music to him. And Yusuke Tachiki, incredibly consistent, which means he can freely pressure us, but lacks adaptability meaning it's easy to catch him off guard. Despite his name, is easily pressured when in front of him. One gun. This time only one team. A tuning company known as Upfluke. Their team leader's car is based on a real-life Upfluke-tuned Porsche. And one of the later Zodiacs actually drives an Upfluke-tuned Toyota Supra. Tetsuna Kayama wanted to be an F1 driver, but after a car accident he could no longer race for some years. Now he's racing on the expressway. Takashi Uchida drives an old Toyota Soarer, but he's crafty enough to experiment on the engine to the point that it's not only powerful, but also stable. And Raito Miyakawa, the car is almost devil incarnate, but it is driven by what is described as a demon, or rather someone possessed by one, hence his nickname. Red Devil. His skyline is also visually tuned in reference to one of the characters from the manga and anime series Mobile Suit Gundam. Funnily enough, the actual character has the nickname of Red Comet. Yokohane. The final team stands in a way. Speedmaster. They are the most numerous, consisting of 10 racers and they are the fastest out of regular teams. Still don't compare to the 13 Devils or Zodiacs. Speaking of Zodiacs, Time to land the killing blow. Katsuya Kogi collects data on everyone on the expressway and studies it, then stories for research sake. He's so good, he turned down the opportunity to become a professional racing driver, because he prefers the highways. Naoki Fujimaki has a soft spot for old classic cars, as his main advantage is his technique when blocking or passing. Received his nickname for appearing out of nowhere and defeating the top 8 drivers at the time. And Chinatsu Moriyama. Her car is the uplook tuned Toyota Supra I mentioned earlier. Being a Supra, the car is very good at accelerating, but being a large metal box that is the Supra, it steers like a brick and has a mediocre top speed. Eve is her racing alter ego, usually a quiet office rat. Wait a minute, if I still remember my 2 plus 2 correctly, I only raced 11 Zodio. What 
Tarot Tate, the mysterious 12th zodiac. His car is the pinnacle of engineering. The Arc 7 is pushing way more than is usually possible. He reads his opponents like a book and he has never been overtaken. Until now. Too bad for Tate, he's in my territory. The C1 loop. The NSX can keep going even into corners. Will the Arc 7, that's stuck to the one gun, now has to remember how to maintain speed in corners. In the end, he did not claim my crown. A legend has become history, but is it true? Aren't there more races you haven't encountered? When all the drivers on the highway see your taillights, that's the time to become the real champion. Now, return to the past and turn the legend into myth. There's still one final task for us. And whilst I completely break the video's pacing, I'll use this opportunity to talk about the gameplay, because the final section of the game is tightly knit with its gameplay. You see, I forgot to mention a fourth faction, sorta. They're not an organized force, and we're technically a part of them. Wanderers. Solo racers who have special conditions for their appearance. For example, the easiest ones are those whom you can encounter on a certain day, like every fifth day, or when all digits in a day are the same, or when the digit contains the number 3, as well as the ones who need you to have a specific license plate, though there's only a small handful of them. Whilst the hardest ones are those who make you race on a long straight in a weak car against a heavily tuned sports car, or those that have an entire list of demands looking at you dumb yet smart. Back to gameplay, let's bring up the cars. They can range from understeer bricks, to a nimble joy to ride, to oh shit! Luckily some of those can be tuned to actually be decent enough to steer. Another thing to note is the gearing. The stock gears are bad. You have to tune your car individually, but as a rule of thumb, make first gears short and last gears long. As well make the final gear lean heavily into top speed. Your car can be upgraded in four different categories. Power, which is your engine and exhaust, drivetrain, which is your gearbox, differential, suspension and tires, body is your reinforcement slash weight reduction upgrade, and aero is mostly visual customization, though in some cases it can help reduce your car's weight even further. The game's AI, well, it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, the bosses are incredibly strong on straights, on the other, the AI is dumb as a box of rocks. They break way too much, struggle with traffic, sometimes get stuck, and tend to spaz out a bit when having to select which way to go, which weirdly makes the game seem a bit bullshit, but also incredibly fun and intense. Because instead of a set finish line, you have a health bar, or an SP bar, which is reduced when being behind a rival or when crashing into stuff. Even blocking slight reduces it, the mightier the impact, the mightier the penalty. And would you look at that, I beat all the wanderers. Hmm. I feel weird. Almost like someone or something is coming after me. Is an enigma. None know its name. None have won against it. It was rumored to be a legendary racer. Its car is the mysterious Nissan Fair Lady Z or S30Z. Outside looks stock, the inside is a mechanism beyond comprehension. The work of either God or Satan, though not much of a difference between the two. It might not be human even. In the first game is the final fourth devil, but in this game it's implied that it's a hallucination or a ghost. And in the third game it's a manifestation of our need for speed, a copy of us that fades us through traffic. Ironically, this pure entity of speed has one fatal flaw, lack of control. Maybe after the first game, or whoever was the real driver of the fair lady, passed away in a crash, and now this car haunts people like us. 
those who will not stop until all is defeated, until there is but one true god of the expressway, us. And it appears that victory has put unknown to rest at last. Now I can breathe calmly. What was that thing you saw? A ghost? An illusion? Or maybe it was your own shadow? Unbelievable speed, technique, power and overwhelming pressure. But you defeated them all. That moment, everything you saw in front of you looked different. Tomorrow is another day. The labyrinth in Tokyo has no goal, no limit, and no end. Conclude, Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero, in my humble opinion, is a masterpiece. A flawed masterpiece. It doesn't delve deep into philosophy and psychology like Disco Elysium. It doesn't just deliver an open world racing experience like Insert AAA Racing Game, but it does one thing, and it does it good. It introduces us to the world of Shutoku, racers of different calibers and characters. Not just Mr. Edge Muck Edgelord being the big buff guy in a skyline calling us a dork, but street racing legends, whose names and teams inspire both admiration and fear, and the racing culture that, unfortunately, doesn't really exist outside of Japan or outside of Asia, and is barely covered outside of this game series or an inspired mod pack for Assetto Corsa. Not counting One Gun Midnight and its cultural impact, both as an anime and as an arcade racing series. Ultimately, if you want to try highway racing and want a great single player experience that encourages 100% playthroughs, then please, pick up Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero. At least you won't regret giving it a try.